We know we're facing uncertain climate futures. I really think imagination and speculation and creativity is going to play a big role in strengthening our preparedness. Our hope is that by opening up new methods of mapping and understanding social networks and communities, we can get a better idea of what makes for a collectively resilient or adaptive community that can withstand or meet the challenges of climate change. This is cutting edge stuff. The CRX funding through Melbourne Climate Futures has enriched our project by making it more collaborative and interdisciplinary. It's also helped us to prioritize a range of management actions in the Burdekin region of Queensland to hopefully get us to the point where we're reaching those water quality targets that help promote the resilience of the Great Barrier Reef to climate change. On the scale of our project, we know that there's intensive scientific drought research going on at the University of Melbourne and going on uh, at the Dukey campus where our project is based. But we also know that um, communities, artists, uh, local people, indigenous people in those areas also have substantial extensive knowledge and are knowledge brokers and practitioners. CRX funding is really helping us to bring these different uh, knowledge holders together. We've used the CRX funding on a project looking at community recovery following the 2009 Black Saturday bushfires. CRX funding has been really, really useful in terms of allowing us to work with computing experts so we can get our cutting edge methods up on supercomputing frameworks uh, to carry out our research. Through this funding, we are running a series of workshops with children and young people to co-develop a resource with them, focusing on the strengths and the resources that they have that they can draw on to navigate the climate crisis. Funding will also allow us to put together a resource that gathers all these ideas, but create something that is also engaging and attractive by working in collaboration with young artists who will also be commissioned to do this work with us. What we're trying to do is produce a high profile report for the climate summit this year and we want to be able to say how much land is globally implicated in countries' climate targets. So this funding and the extra research support has meant we're really moving forward and we have uh, initial results showing already that over 800 million hectares of land would be needed globally to meet net zero climate pledges. Land is obviously primarily important for feeding people, also for biodiversity protection and for indigenous land rights. And we can't just assume land is available for climate mitigation. So this project's really going to open up that conversation and allow these important debates to happen.